Hello there. I'm Dragon Masters 525 with Game Plan Studios, and you're here to watch my how to color tutorial. Uh, before we begin, though, I'm here to answer a couple questions that people have been asking me from time to time, like, uh, what is this program? This program that I'm using is called Easy Paint Tool Sci. I think, it, in my opinion, I think it's one of the best programs I've ever used ever in my entire life. Um, the second question, is it free? Sadly, it's not. I don't know how much it costs though because my friend got this for me, but yeah. So in this video, I'm more here to show you um, like basic, just really, really basic coloring and shading. So with further ado, let's begin. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the right hand to my right hand side and create a new layer. And what it does and what this does, it makes me keep my line art on top and I can just put my color under it. So I'm going to go to my line art and with the select tool I'm going to select um, whichever character I want. I'm going to start with this guy on the left so I'm just going to select his hair or actually not his hair let's do his skin let's do skin yeah um, so now that I've selected the desired area I'm going to go back to my layer and pick the color I want. I have the colors already preset here, so I'm just gonna get them here. So this color is more like a kind of like a peachy color, I guess. But yeah. So what I'm doing here is I'm applying a base color. I'm only gonna be working with two colors. One for like basic coloring uses like a base color and kind of like something a, another shading, if you know what I mean. Like it's really hard to explain, but you'll see, you'll see. Um, I already got my base color, so I'm going to go and apply shading. And the trick with shading, because I noticed that some people were like, don't know how to shade or want to know how to shade, is that um, you just have to think of where the light source is coming from. And in here, the light source is going to be coming from here, from the top corner to this guy's face. So it will only be natural if the shading would be over here on this side because light is not affecting this side. Another thing that's cool about shading is that a whole bunch of stuff can affect it. So let's say your hair. Um, I notice people, I, I do this too, but people like shade around the hair part and that's basically showing that the hair causes a shadow on the skin. So you can you can kind of see it. Also, um, crevices on the face also cause shading. Um, ears in the ears, uh, the deeper the ear, the more the darker it is. You can add shading there. Usually under your neck, there's a lot of shading under your a lot of shadows actually under your neck, and around your collarbone area, uh, places that don't get much sun. You know. Bam. You can put some shading on the top of the lip to, to show, I guess, more depth. If I just stick with like the simple stuff because I, I'm a simple guy. <laughs> Let me just fix this here. And bam. Now you have some shading to your character. But what if you're saying, oh, I don't know where to put the shadows on? Um, just like take a take a take your light bulb, right, a lamp or something, and just put it against an orange, and just look at the where the light hits, and that's where you draw your shadows. Or that's how I learned. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna make two layers: one for skin, which is gonna be actually let me name it skin. This one's for skin. This one is for hair, and I'm gonna add eyes to it too. Because I don't want to make too many layers and get confusing. So up here, select the hair with the select tool. The eyes. Actually, I'll leave the eyes later. I'll select the eyebrows now. Then go to your pen or your dropper. Pick your base. And do the same thing over again. Like, I've, uh, I've noticed... A lot more experienced artists use more than two colors of shading. 
because, well, obviously they're experienced and they know what they're doing. I mean, I'm not saying that I do know what I'm doing. I do know what I'm doing. But I kind of go more for the basic stuff because I'm not high up there with uh, with other artists, you know? And uh, for people who, who are watching this video, you must be like, like, oh my god, I want to shade like with multiple colors, but I don't know what to start. Uh, I, su I don't suggest doing all that at once because it can get really hard. Like I, Like when I started shading with multiple colors, right? Um, I kind of got upset and confused, and I didn't know what the heck I was doing, and I was just getting pissed off at myself. So I kind of, I kind of started seeing people in a lot of anime and a lot of cartoon characters do this, that they only use, you know, one or two, or I think at the three, like, max, max colors that they're using for shading would probably be, like, three colors. And I was like, oh my god, this is help, this is so helpful, because, like, I'm not, I'm not wasting too much energy. And I can place the shadows almost anywhere, and it still looks good. So here I just finish the hair. Now I'm just going to add the eyes real quick. I think I'll keep the eyes the same color as the hair. I kind of like matching. You don't have to match, though. Um, let's go with white. White, do the little, the little thing. I'll leave the tongue gray for now. And I'm just going to add white for the... For the white part of the eyes. I forgot what it's called though. I know it was a specific name. Is it a pupil? I think it's a pupil. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So bam. Easy two step coloring. You only use at the max at the max here you only use four colors, two for the hair, two for that, two for your for your skin. And I added white for the eyes. Let's go to the next one. The next one. It's gonna be cool. You know why? Because I know so. I'm just kidding. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Apply your base color, and then get after you apply your base color, get your second color. For this guy, since he's not doing a third, fourth view like him, the shading's gonna go around his face, also around his neck as well. So. Let's start this. I was going to do more of the chin area since the hair covers around there a lot. Um, since he has super long hair, it's going to cast a lot of shadows. Um, I would want to do around the eyebrows because I know your eyebrows are folds of skin as well. I'm going to do under his lip. To show that he has lips. Let me see. Hmm. Now we we'll go to the neck part under his neck. I I I what I tend to do with uh, necks in my drawings. I don't know if other people do this, but I tend to make kind of like a specific area, even using these black lines, where I, where it kind of tells me how to make or not make where to place my shadows. That's me. I mean, you can place them anywhere, like you can put them over here or over here, but I tend to kind of make this this area, if you know what I'm saying. I don't know, it's kind of like a my personal footnote. Well, I'm actually going to add this part here, this part here. I'm going to add here around the collarbone. The collarbone is actually really interesting. I don't know, like, I have really defined collarbones. So like I tend to kind of put that in my art because I personally have them and they're I don't know they're kind of easy to draw they're kind of not but I like them pretty awesome oh and now that we got all this done the nose I forgot about the nose keep on tending to do it so what I'm doing for the nose is that I've noticed this in a lot of anime so that's why I'm saying I'm showing you guys this but um in anime. I've seen they tend to do something like this with their noses. And what it shows is the underside of the nose. And when they want to show kind of at least a little bit more depth, they add kind of like a white line here to show that that's the bridge of the nose. So now that I added the nose and everything, I'm going to add the white for the pupils or for the white part of the eyes. And bam. Now I'm going to go back, select this. 
Oh dang, I forgot the ears. I'll, I'll do that later. Select your base. And bam. Now you see that your character is starting to be to get a little bit more death. Uh, you you won't get it the first time. It took me multiple tries to do something like this. So if it doesn't come out like it's supposed to, it's okay. Don't get upset. That's the least thing you want to do because if you get upset, you're you you're not gonna have your, the motivation to do it and all that kind of stuff. So just take your time. Find out where the shadows goes. Find out what perspective you have. All that. You know, all that jazz. Um, I notice with my characters though, they tend to be a little bit more kind of cartoonish. I kind of like mix styles together, so this is like kind of a unique style. So like, my shading gets weird from time to time. It may not for your art, maybe, maybe not, but it can get weird. Bam. Now let's go back. Get the ears for the ears I'm, I'm not gonna I'm just gonna go straight oh, wait hold on I'm just gonna go straight to the shaded part because it's behind so bam get the eyebrows and the eyes boo, 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 boo. yeah um I took up drawing four years ago and funny story um when I started drawing, I've always wanted to make a manga, so that's like been always my dream. But for right now, I've just um, really just been making, trying to make tutorials, trying to get this YouTube channel up, trying to increase my art a little bit before I actually start making my manga. Yeah, I just just thought I'd tell you guys this, you know, little information about me, and bam, now your character. Now your character has kind of like this three-dimensional effect. One thing I've noticed with uh, people starting is that uh, they tend to do first, like, kind of like the front view. I, me personally, I don't suggest going straight into that because this is the hardest view. I suggest trying doing three-fourth view or side views because they're a lot easier. I don't, I don't like, I don't like front views or views like under, looking down like this one right here that I'm about to color. Because it's really difficult for me. Maybe easy for some people, but it's really difficult for me. So as you can tell, I have different views, and each view has different uh, shading. As you notice on the third, fourth one, the shading was more towards the left. The front view, it was kind of like all around. The l this kind of under view, all the shading is like closer to the bottom. I mean, you can argue that it's closer to the bottom. I think it's closer to the bottom. But I mean, like you could put some on top on top of here because you're not seeing this person's eyes, you know? So I guess, ooh, that looks horrible. Uh, I'll just stick with this. But yeah. I'm gonna blur. I'm actually. I wasn't gonna use the blur tool in this tutorial, but I am. And but what the blur does, it kind of softens lines. The reason I'm using this is because it kind of doesn't look right from the angle I'm looking at. Kind of like bam. Um, the cool thing about this really basic shading is that you don't have to use complicated tools like the blur tool. I mean, unless you want to. But it's cre as you can tell down here, it creates like a different kind of shade kind of literally blurs out the the color the, or the lines um one um ever since I got Psy um I've noticed what I've done is uh, my line art my line art has improved and the reason for that is using the stabilizer. The cool thing about the stabilizers is that it changes how I guess fast you move the, um, your uh, your mouse or pen. 
Um, right now I'm in the basic one. That's six. And when I made the line arts, uh, I you went to a more sturdier one, like S7. S7. I'm guessing the S stands for stabilized. I'm not sure. Don't quote me. But as you can tell up here, that it's super slow and it makes crisp clean lines. Over here, like the higher the higher it is up here, the faster it's gonna be. Like six. I mean, like zero. And the lower it gets into the S7s, the slower it becomes. Just thought I'd let you guys know that. In, in case you're wondering how to make, you know, Chris line art, stuff like that. All that jazz. So what I'm doing is I'm making the like the lower part of the hair, making it darker and getting kind of lighter at the top. Because in my the way I'm, I'm imagining this is I'm seeing all the shades like dark down here going lighter up here. That's how I'm seeing it. People may do it differently. This is how I do it. And yeah. <laughs> Bam. Guy has some snazzy green hair, man. Now, oh, dang. Oops. Oh, well. I added the hair on this. See, that's one thing I, I, I tend to do in Psy is I, I kind of smash everything in one layer. That's kind of my bad. So you got to kind of figure out where your coloring's at. So starting with the side view now, did my base, getting my, uh, my, my darker tone, and now I'm going to shade. For side views, I mean, it can go either way. You can put everything, all you can put all the shading on one side, I guess. And, um, or not, or not. Or you can do what I'm doing here, and I'm getting more focused on facial, like, I'm putting shading more on the facial expressions to show kind of like a, a depth, I guess you can say. I'm not sure, really. I just know, like, I've done, like, I, I kind of figured this out on my own, because um, not many people, like, I've taught myself how to draw. Um, I didn't get, like, classes or anything. So I've noticed, I noticed from personal experience that it looks better like this. But you don't have to do this if you don't want to. See, um, applied the shading in the collarbone. Behind the ear, in the ear. Around this angry face. The, the hair is creating a some shadows, that's good. Makes it, you know, cool, 3D like. Now I'm going to do the hair. Do, 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 do. Apply the base color. Oh man, this red <laughs> kind of hurts my eyes. But it's okay. You will live on. Got this red. Oh, and another thing I forgot to mention. How do you find a darker tone of the same color? For Psy, I use this. It's called... Uh, I think it's... Yeah, it's the, called the HSV slider, and I use the color wheel. So I just pick a color, and from there, I... Uh, I kind of mess around until I find the tone I'm looking for. That's how I and that's how I find these darker colors. If for any of you guys who are wondering how to how to get these colors, I'm applying this super dark kind of brick red. I like to be honest. I really like this color, this red, especially for characters. Well, I'm more of a shonen type kind of guy, kind of guy. I like all these awesome fight scenes in manga and anime and I love all this action and I love like the stereotypical anime character with spiky hair and stuff like that so that's kinda like what I like so that's what 
my art tends to look like my characters and my art tends to look like kind of like that like Dragon Ball Z not well not really like Dragon Ball Z because my style is pretty different from Akira Toriyama's obviously you know but uh yeah, he's some of my inspiration for drawing and then uh what's his name I think his name is Ida he's the creator of One Piece he's also some of my inspiration as well for drawing I kind of want to meet them one day. Hopefully, one day. <laughs> uh, my cut, my uh, my shading here for this hair is not going well. Looking kind of weird, but kind of not. I'm gonna blur it out just a little bit. But yeah, this kind of this kind of shading is like without using the blur tool, obviously. This kind of shading is pretty cool because like you don't have to use those other those other um those other tools like the blur and the line and the line I mean the blur and the blend because there's this tool that I've downloaded someone post someone posted this on my Facebook because I have artists I actually have artist friends but um But uh, someone let me download the the bit the bitmap the, the file to let me get more brushes, which is pretty cool. Because I don't know how to make brushes though yet. But yeah, got that awesome you know red eye going on. Gotta get that shining. Bam. Put the white part of the eye in there. Bam. Now for these characters, because I added extra stuff, so I'm just gonna color their the tongue over here. Tongue over here. Oh no. And the teeth, always forget the teeth. And bam, that is how you do. I want to call this a two step color, like two step, I want to call this two step coloring, right? But this is how you basic, do basic coloring. And from there, you kind of want to, you know, just kind of experiment. That's what I found. So if you're having struggle, if you're struggling with you know coloring and shading, just kind of do kind of like this in the beginning, and then get better. Practice, practice makes perfect. You know what they say. Well, I hope this video was helpful in any way. If you guys need any help, just comment on the video below. You know, tell me if I should make a tutorial on anatomy and stuff like that, because I know a lot of people need help on that. So I might do one later, or just whatever you guys need help in. Well, we see here. Bam. And also check out my horribly made <sighs> YouTube videos and on the channel. <laughs> oh, man. And check out the speed arts and stuff like that. But, yeah. On the next video, guys. See ya.